looking at our question two on our practice test A for chapter 16. We are being asked to calculate a pH of a 0 0.035 molar solution of oxalic acid, a diprotic acid, H2C2O4. And the accompanying question that goes with it says calculate the concentration of the oxalate ion in solution. Knowing that polyprotic acids will ionize one step at a time, we end up needing a Ka1 to find the pH and a Ka2 to find the oxalate ion. The pH comes from the first ionization only. The oxalate ion will come from the second ionization. So thinking through our first equilibrium, we start with our diprotic acid, H2C2O4, setting up an equilibrium with H plus and HC2O4 negative. The Ka constant in the first ionization, we look up using our appendix D, and we find that value equal to 5.9 times 10 to the negative 2. In the ICE, the ice chart, 0 0.035 molar represents the initial concentration of the acid, and the ions would be at 0. The ions form to give us the value of X, and at equilibrium we would have 0 0.035 minus X, representing the concentration of our acid. Setting up our equation where Ka, 5.9 times 10 to the negative 2 is equal to X squared, set over 0 0.035, and I'm going to leave that and check the 5% rule. When we solve for X, X will represent the concentration of the hydrogen ion at equilibrium, which we can then use to calculate pH. Let's hit solving for X first without the quadratic equation, and from there, we'll check our 5% rule. 5.9 E negative 2 times 0 0.035. Hi, everyone. I will square root that answer. And I'm showing a hydrogen concentration of 0 0.045 molar. This is what my calculator is showing. I think I'll ask my calculator buddies in the audience, is that a match from our first try? And I'm getting nods. Thank you. We're having an aha moment where the X concentration came out larger than the initial concentration we began with. And that's not possible. So what we're looking at is the quad. The quadratic equation would be required since we're breaking the 5% rule well over 100%. So we'll have to go back to the drawing board and simply set up same equation but including the minus x on the bottom value. So 5.9 times 10 to the negative 2 set equal to x squared over 0 0.035 minus x, taking into consideration the quadratic equation. We'll simplify that equation, putting it into the quadratic formula, 5.9e negative 2 times 0 0.035, negative value of 2.065 times 10 to the negative 6, minus 5.9 times 10 to the negative 2x, minus x squared set equal to 0. So when we hit on our calculator, A would have a value of negative 1, B has a value of negative 5.9 times 10 to the negative 2, and C has a value of 2.065 times 10 to the negative 6. Using our calculator, let's hit for the value of X and see if we get a common answer. So let's everybody hit to be sure I'm doing it right. How is calculus? Okay, good. Let's see, quad. Negative 1 for A, negative 5.9, E, negative 2 for B, and C has a value of 2.065, E, negative 6. When I hit, X is coming out to be 0 0.0014, but I'll wait to see if we get a common answer. No? It's okay to say no because I'll hit it twice. He 
here. Let me just cross multiply. Again, I'll check my work. 5.9e negative 2 cross multiplied with 0 0.035. Do you find 0 0.002065? Thank you. See? Calculator buddies. Now, Teamwork gets us through our example. Thank you again. We've got an, a corrected C. Again, just cross multiplying the Ka1 times the original concentration is where we're pulling the C. And let me try the quad formula again. 0 0.002065 for A. Or no, negative 1 for A. Negative 5.9 e negative 2. I'll wait for my audience to nod. Excellent. How about over here? Yay. Okay, so more than a couple are agreeing. X looks like 0 0.024, and I'll just round up to 7. 0 0.0247 looks like our common answer for the value of x. So backing up, we noticed first of all when we did not use the quadratic equation, the x value came out larger than the initial concentration. That's not possible, so we knew to back up and use the quadratic equation. A few times through that, we finally reached a common answer for the value of hydrogen ion. Knowing that hydrogen ion, I'll just transfer over 0 0.0247 molar, To find the pH, we take our negative log of that concentration and we'll find our pH. So negative log of our answer, 0.042677, and I'm finding 1.60. And now I'll just wait for more nods. Excellent, thank you. Couple of things to observe. When we're looking for a pH from a polyprotic acid, it comes from the Ka1 constant only. So the first ionization contributes the vast majority of the hydrogen ion. So we solved first without the quad, we realized we can't use the 0 0.045 molar to determine pH, it's larger than the initial concentration. From there we backed up and worked through the quadratic equation formula to solve for the value of x. Knowing that X represents the hydrogen ion, we negative log that value and pulled out the pH. To continue this question, we carry on with the polyprotic acid here, the HC2H4, O4, C2O4 negative 1. The hydrogen oxalate ion releases its second hydrogen to form the oxalate ion C2O4 minus 2. We mentioned that this would represent the second ionization constant, and using our appendix D, we found Ka2 to be 6.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. Here's what we know so far. The hydrogen oxalate concentration is carried down from the answer above. The 0 0.0247 molar also represented the value of x, the hydrogen oxalate. So when I think about the ice chart, I begin with 0 0.0247 as the initial concentration of the hydrogen oxalate. The hydrogen ion has also been determined. The value that we found from the first ionization also gets carried down into the second equilibrium's initial concentration. And what we don't know is the oxalate ion, so that becomes our zero. Products get made, so we have a value of 0 0.0247 plus x, representing the hydrogen, the value of x for oxalate, and 0 0.0247 minus x, representing the 
equilibrium concentration of the hydrogen oxalate ion. Ka2 is our expression of products over reactants. Ka2 was found to say uh, 6.4 times 10 to the negative fifth. Again, that's off of Appendix D. Set equal to the concentration of hydrogen ion, 0 0.0247 plus X. X represents the concentration of oxalate. Set over 0 0.0247 minus X the concentration of hydrogen oxalate at equilibrium. Again, assuming that this number here for the second ionization is significantly smaller than the first ionization, we're allowed to toss out the X. So the plus X and minus X are disregarded. And something interesting happens with the algebra. The concentration of the hydrogen ion indeed matches the concentration of the hydrogen oxalate ion and 6.4 times 10 to the negative fifth now equals X, where X was representing the oxalate concentration. So the very value of Ka2 becomes the concentration of the oxalate at equilibrium. Let's pause here and digest. <laughs> Let me hit stop.